Hey everyone, welcome back to Ardham Sharp Weekly. In the last video, I talked about how you can create your own custom Swift UI control call card and how you can attach a tab gesture to it. That's great, but how about if we attach the drag gesture also? So how can we do that? So let's go ahead and see that how we can attach a drag gesture so I can simply drag this card around. We're gonna use the same approach which means that we're going to use the gesture function to apply the drag gesture. Dot gesture. And one of the gesture is tab gesture. You have already seen. I'm going to go ahead and use the drag gesture. And drag gest gesture is going to allow me to, well, drag. It has a couple of different events. So this one is on change event where you will get the value. This is the drag value that is going to be passed to you. And it will have different properties like uh, the size, the height, and all the other stuff also. The other thing that we need in this case is the on ended. So right over here, on ended means once you have completed the drag and we're gonna get the value in something. Now, what do we want to do? What do we want to change for our card control when we're actually dragging it up or down? Well, we want to change the offset. Let me go ahead and change the offset to show you what actually happened. So if I go ahead and change the offset and I'm only changing the Y offset and I'm saying the Y offset is 100, you can see that it's actually moving up or down. Right now it's moving down. So definitely, this is the thing that I want to change when you're actually dragging it. But that has to be dependent on the value of the drag. So how can we do that? Once again, we have to use the power of the state. So I'm gonna go ahead and build the state. Private var dragged offset, which will be CG size dot zero. And now when you're actually dragging or when the dragging is, is changing, I can go ahead and get the new offset. So self dot drag offset equals to the value dot translation. Translation is actually the CG size. So it will have the width and the height and all the stuff. When the drag actually stops, I can go ahead and say drag offset CG size dot zero. Okay, great. Uh, this code is actually inspired from Meng2 code. Uh, so he's, he has a similar code, actually. It's pretty much the same code that he has. So it's very much inspired from his code, by the way. Okay. So now we can actually go ahead and change this. So self dot drag offset dot height. Okay, let's go ahead and resume it. So now what we're doing is that every time we change, we drag, we're going to assign the translation to this. The translation is basically the size, which will contain the height and the width and the X and Y and all that stuff. I don't know if it actually has X and Y, let's see. It actually has uh, a couple of different things. You can see height and width and all that stuff is there. So we're just gonna use the height. Um, let me see if it has a position or something. Okay, it doesn't. Okay, so this is all we have right now. Um, let's go ahead and run this and see if we are able to drag our view or not. So it's gonna be in preview mode. And once it is in the preview mode, I can actually try to drag it and see that if it changes the offset. We already have checked that if we change the offset of our card control, it actually does move. But now we have to see that if it will change, it will move and we are actually dragging. So now I'm dragging and you can see it's actually changing. When the drag is finished, on end it gets fired, which sets the drag offset back to zero, which makes sure that the offset is back to zero because this is a state that we are changing. Every time we change the state, the view is actually updated. Okay, this is, this is really great and it's working fine, but maybe we can actually animate it. So how about if you, fire in animation, and I'm just gonna say basic animation. Okay, 
Um, let's go ahead and see how that works. I'm going to go ahead and run it again with the animation this time and basic animation. Okay, nice and smooth. That's good, but maybe we can do a little bit more better. Instead of the basic animation, we can actually pass in spring animation and see if that works with the spring animation. See that? I clicked actually, so it changed the color, but now we have a spring animation going on. Pretty cool. And you see that we didn't really have to write that much code to achieve that. It's uh, it's basically a little bit of code to achieve a much bigger, better result. All right, so there you have it. In the last video, you learned about the tap gesture, which still works. You can see I can tap on it and it changes the color, toggles between two colors. And this time you learn about the drag gesture, which allows you to drag and then let it go. And now you have a spring animation. You can obviously pass some parameters to your spring animation to customize it more if you want to but by default, it gives you a nice animation. If you have enjoyed this video and you want to support my work in my Udemy channel, then you might be interested in checking out my course on Udemy. The course is about Swift UI declarative interfaces for any Apple device. Uh, I'm still working on the course, but uh, four and a half hours, it's already available, but I will keep on adding stuff as I learn more about Swift UI. Um, apart from the Swift UI course that you see right now, you will, can also get access to many other courses. And all the courses, or most of the courses, links is right there in the description. So if you want to learn Swift UI, but you also want to learn Node.js, or maybe building real world apps, or using or Rx Swift, the course link is right there in the description of YouTube video, all right? And I would really appreciate, I mean, if you want to buy the course, I would really appreciate if you actually click on the link in the description that already has a coupon attached to it that will give you the best price. And not only it will give you the best price, it will allow me to use my coupon, which means I can take like much bigger revenue of $10. So I can take like $9 to be really honest with you. If you use some other coupon, uh, then I'll get like nothing. I'll get like $1. So if you want to support me, the best way is to use the coupon that I'm providing in the description. And trust me, it will give you the best deal, $9.99. If you go on Udemy, you can get it for $18, $16, or a little bit more, but the $9.99 is the minimum that you can go. So please use the coupons that is inside the description of the YouTube video. That will give you the best deal, and that will be very helpful for me. And if you scroll down in the YouTube description, right at the bottom, you will see a link to the subscribe to the mailing list. Make sure you subscribe to the mailing list because I do send out some free stuff like uh, I will be sending out books related to Siri shortcuts and augmented reality or AR kit and I will be sending out resource material for Swift UI. So you'll only get that material if you're actually subscribed and you'll get also deals and coupons and all that stuff if you're subscribed to the mailing list. But uh, once again, thank you so much for supporting my channel and uh, once again, thank you so much and enjoy the video.